This is The Wealth Puzzle with Michael Mansfield from The Lynn Group. When a part of your financial strategy is out of tune, your long-term goals, your retirement savings, and your legacy can all suffer. With many years of experience in the financial industry, Michael provides his clients and prospects with the information they need regarding Social Security, retirement income planning, wealth management, and much more. Listen in as we address your financial concerns and provide helpful solutions to put you on the path to achieving your retirement goals. And now, here is The Wealth Puzzle with Michael Mansfield. Hi, everyone. Thank you for tuning in to our podcast, The Wealth Puzzle. There's Mike. Woohoo! And I'm Tana. And we're from The Lynn Group. And our focus is retirement income planning. And hopefully, we have some really good information for you today um, that will give you some peace of mind. We've got some good data to look at. And um, yeah, so. You say, you say, what'd you say? Interesting? I say depressing. Yeah, well, no, no, it, well, I don't know. Depressing. I think it's interesting. What? I think it kind of gives me a little confidence and a little peace. peace yeah, of we're mind. not supposed to say depressing because normally <laughs> Tana and I are the, the glass is half full of right? right? We, we try to yes. come on here. Definitely. And we talk positive vibes, you know, <laughs> keep it going. Um, everybody else be. is doom and gloom. Depression. Yeah, no. You got to be positive. We try to use the, the economic tea leaves to, uh, you know, make a case of what we think is going to happen in the next yeah. six to 12 months. And, and honestly, we're we're still in that camp. We still think the market's going to go up higher. Mm -hmm. We still think things are going to work out here. It's tough because every day that ticks on is just another drama filled day. And so mm -hmm. we're kind of in the, uh, the kind of capitulation of all this stuff right now. Interesting news though. You know, two weeks ago, Tana and I did a show and we said that, you know, hi history has always said by the invasion from a stock market standpoint. And so far it's been hanging out at the same level. It hasn't really gone right. down. It hasn't really gone up. We're just still hanging out. So geez, at some point it needs to pick a direction. There's just so much uncertainty, right? Yeah, um, definitely. So uh, what's happened this week? Let's pop up some articles here and let's get down to business. Cause I, yeah, I, have, a, I have a meeting Tana. I know, I know waste we're in time. a rush this morning, a, but I, I sent you an article this um, morning. I got your article. I yeah. Got your article. Your article was, was humbling. <laughs> So we'll, we'll get to your depressing article later. Oh, yeah. So what happened last week, though? Last week, first and foremost, uh, the inflation numbers for February came out. And as usual, they were the best ever. Mm. Is it, should I say it like that? Yeah. Or were they ever. the worst ever? They were the best ever. You know, <laughs> you have never seen inflation this high. It's, it's that good. Um, you know, inflation teased up to almost 8% year over year in a 12-month period which is the largest increase in about 40 years. I think it was 1982 that they had the same level of inflation at the moment. So pretty crazy. Obviously, we, you know, we, we've been talking about this stuff quite a bit. Um, a big component of it is the money supply that was expanded right. in the last two years. You know, that's why Tana's got an electric bike and all that <laughs> nice stuff you see behind her. It's because of all the, the government money she got in the last two years. Didn't go towards, you know, no. food storage. But we do know that there's a possibility that the feds are going to raise rates this week, maybe possibly on Wednesday. Okay. So that could have an effect on inflation. Could. So, yeah. Probably won't. But so, so inflation's insane, right? So Tana lives in Texas where everything is half price, but you have to ride a horse everywhere. <laughs> so that's why it's cheaper. No. Um, Although that would be that's fun. That's not true. I don't know. Do people like, do you just see people on horses around? There, there? Is, is a lot a of horse properties and, okay. and okay. people. Properties. Fair yeah. Enough. Yeah. But the inflation was fascinating, right? So huge increase in inflation. Honestly, you know, it's being exasperated by the Russian war and things like mm -hmm. that. Uh, fun fact, when you look at the breakdown of the inflation numbers here, if anyone's watching this on YouTube or Rumble, you get to see the little slides and things we show. The, the energy index, I bet no one could guess this, was the largest contributor to the increase. The 6.6% .6 increase in the gas index accounted for a third wow. of the new um, inflation that we have measured. So a lot of this is gas. Yeah. But the good news is, is gas has only gone up because of the Russian war. Right? That's it. It just goes no, up the Russian no, war. No, 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 no. No, what? that's not true. That's not true. No, gas is purchased in future contracts. So we're, yeah, we haven't seen. So you're saying it wasn't Russia? The effect of that. No, not yet. 
So what's funny is that was kind of loaded. Tana, Tana actually sent me this chart the other day because um, we were we were spitballing right. the, the history of gas prices. It's very and, interesting, yeah. And it, and it's an interesting thing because you know, unfortunately, a lot of what we do is political, right? You know, politics do create regulations. Mm -hmm. Regulations and policies then govern the concept of how company profitability works. And so the reality is a lot of politics do have an impact on different sectors and the bottom line and earning of companies. And so what I thought was interesting, what Tana and I were, were debating the other day is, hang on, let me go to this chart. So if anyone's looking at this chart, this is historical gas prices. The chart goes back to into the early 90s. Mm -hmm. I just uh, I tried to blow this up a little bit so we could see it. So let's think. Trump went into office in January of 17. So in January of 2017, Gas prices were an average for the nation. That's not just here locally, unfortunately. <laughs> Ventura, you add a buck to any number of right. you live in Ventura. So true. So nationally, though, gas prices were about two dollars and forty-four cents. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the number. And they went up, and they went down, and they went up, and then they went down a lot. So the last part of it, certainly the COVID crash. Mm -hmm. but then Biden became president in January of 2021. Mm -hmm. And I know it's hard to see on the TV. I'm just kind of scrolling through the chart here. But in January of 2021, the average fuel price was $2.46. <gasps> what do we notice here? So Trump was at $2.44, it, Biden at $2.46. So one way or another, you know, if you just drew a straight line, gas was flat for that, that presidency, mm -hmm. which is mm -hmm. weird, right? It went up, it went down, it went up, it went down. But one way or another, the start and stop is kind of interesting that it ended at about $2.46. In the last 12 months, well, it's like 14 months, but in the last 12 plus months, Tana, are you paying more in gas? I am. You yes. Are? Yeah. Are. Yep, you here Tesla? In that was a trick question. <laughs> I don't. I don't drive very much. Thank you. That's a Ford Fusion. That's got to get a good gas mileage. It's got the word Fusion in it. Doesn't that mean something nice? Well, we're like up to about three eighty nine, four dollars per gallon, and then diesel's up to five. My right husband's now. in like an F four fifty, yeah, lifted monster ah. truck. It looks like a Barbie car on him. No, it does. The um, it does not. He's got his head out the roof, and his <laughs> feet out the sides. Ah. He, still, he still pedals with his feet. That's a good visual. The um, since then though, so since uh, since the new presidency has happened, so a little over a year, you've seen fuel prices go up seventy percent, right? So last week it clocked mm -hmm. in the top dollar was four nineteen a gallon. 70%. And so it's funny, right? Because what do we hear constantly right now in the news? It's Putin. It's the Putin gas increase. Right. That's actually why Tana and I wanted to talk about this because everything that we see is, is that rhetoric all of a sudden is all I hear in all of these CNBC articles and all this junk we read is, well, it's the, the Putin gas price increase. Well, that's partially true. But if you look at the chart and I know it's hard to see because it's little and if anyone wants the link, I'll send it to you. But from mm -hmm. January 2021 up until basically February, mm -hmm. guess what? It's been going up. Gas had already gone up 40%. Yeah, right. It's finally in the last few weeks kind of gone parabolic straight up. Right. To put that final push on it. But it was already in a massive uptrend, a super mm -hmm. cycle straight up. The average gallon of gas was up a buck. It was at uh, let's see here, da, 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 da. yeah, it was at, it was at almost three fifty a gallon. So right. gas had already gone up a buck a gallon nationally before the Russia thing really got exasperated. Before we said we're not buying Russian oil and all these things that right. really made the gas price go parabolic in the last couple of weeks. So um, a bearer of bad news. There's something bigger going on that's been pushing gas prices than than the singular event of the Russia thing. That in and of itself has added to the gas prices. That in and of itself will ultimately quail out of the gas prices. Mm -hmm. But remember, we purchase less than 10% of our imported oil comes from Russia. So, you know, theoretically, our gas prices shouldn't go up 40, 60, 70 percent in 12 months, you know, based on something like that. So it's quite the phenomenon, right? You know, a lot of it has to go back to what we were talking about. And that's politics, regulatory actions. Um, you know, the way that they control pipelines and the flow of energy and mm -hmm. deregulation, regulation, not deregulation. Whoops. It's kind of, you know, it's interesting. Um, the reality though is, is, you know, we, the reason that energy prices were, even though they bounce around a lot, were somewhat controlled is 
we had really pushed towards being somewhat of an energy superpower a handful of years mm -hmm. ago, and we're kind of straying away from that. And the reality is, is no matter how green we want our country to be, no matter how many windmills and solar panels and things that we put up, it still mathematically cannot shake a stick at the power of fossil fuels at the moment. And we're probably 20, 30, 40 years out from a really, truly transformative change in the country where you could say, okay, it all makes sense. But, but that's like the dirty secret in the US, right? Is we all act like we want clean energy, which we do. But the reality is mm -hmm. we just don't, we, we secretly use all the oil. And so instead of just producing it here where it's the most regulated, the cleanest, mm -hmm. doesn't need to come on a boat, all of this stuff. Right. Instead, we'd rather ship dirty, gross, unregulated oil from Russia and now Venezuela and Iran and all of these places that don't like us. Um, and somehow that's a better deal for the mother earth. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I don't know. Kind of weird. Tell you what, I haven't bought an electric car yet because I can't <laughs> afford one. Cause does anyone notice that the average, did you know, last year, the average electric car vehicle sales price was $51,000. Wow. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. So everyone just run out, run out, get your, get yourself one. Cause somehow that's a better deal than just paying an extra buck or two in your gas prices. Mm -hmm. Right. So anyways, whoo, that felt a little uh, <laughs> politically. <laughs> right. But there's an irony here is, is, is these things are all interchanged, right? You, you can't, yeah. sometimes you can't talk about economics of something without talking about the politics of yeah, it. Yeah, very true. And so we have a lot going on in our country that really needs to be thought about because our energy usage hasn't gone anywhere. We just said, okay, instead of making it as much ourselves, we'll, we'll sneak it in the back door and then we'll be able to tell everyone how good we're being. When ironically, we're it's creating worse. more carbon output right. it's and worse. Doing, doing much more damage to the earth, if that's the argument. Right. Uh, it's The whole thing's nutter butters at this point. Yeah, no, I agree. <sighs> All right. I'm going to just go crawl under my desk, Shannon. And you just, no, you just, don't do that. We got do a lot to thing. do. Do a thing. <laughs> what was your article? Where's your article? Hang on. Uh, yeah. Here's your article. Yeah. All right. What do you got for us? So, yeah, the feds are saying that they're going to be uh, raising interest rates this week to Yay. help tame inflation. Um, so that could be helpful, um, but that will definitely impact us in, you know, several ways. Um, this would be um, an increased rate um, that you know, would affect our credit cards, yeah. our mortgages, our auto loans, student loans. Um, so yeah, it would definitely have an effect. So everyone could be paying a little more, huh? Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's funny was they were saying like, like here in auto loans, I was reading this when you sent it to me this morning is on auto loans. They're saying, Hey, if you uh, purchase a $25,000 car, it could be an extra three bucks a month with this first quarter point rate hike. Right. Well, that's not going to hurt. But your Tesla but... costs 51 grand. What you... So, so it's $6 a, a month. That means, well, <laughs> I guess if you buy the electric yeah. car, then the rationale here won't be good. But if you, if you get a gas car with this loan, then you, you won't be able to purchase one half gallon a month of gas <laughs> because you need to save the three bucks of interest. Uh... Oh, it's just crazy. I also saw that mortgage rates would go up from this a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. This is kind of funny to me, actually. You know what the phenomenon is? Now, I'm not old enough. I've been criticized by many clients on this show of not being old enough to know what it was like to live in black and white. Um, but I'm here now. And so what I do remember is the first time I bought a house, my interest rate was 6.5%. And yeah, I was told, and I can remember, oh, dude. <laughs> What a great deal, man. Right. Uh, Better than like 15. We're going to have the whole 16. office come and slap you on the back because you just did the so best true. deal ever. So true. And then, you know, and then like a year later, we refinance at five and a half percent. And they're like, this is the best deal ever. Oh, this is yeah. crazy. That was my keyboard slapping. The, um, <laughs> you know, and then, and then what happened? And the next thing came around. Now it's four and a half percent. Right. Oh, I love this. This is the, the greatest ever. <laughs> right. Um, I'm not. I'm not one of the lucky ones to have these loans in the twos. Uh, you know, but a lot yeah. of people we know. I, a lot know, my, of people refinanced a couple years ago. Aunt, yeah. 
did a VA loan at like a 30 year loan at like two and a quarter percent. Like (laughs) what? So I've got a loan. Phenomenal. At 3.3, which I think is good enough so i didn't ever refine it again it's like it's so much paperwork yeah it's such a hassle yeah and so what's funny is guys i got bad news rates have risen to four <laughs> percent and and it's hilarious to me because when rates came down to four percent you know everyone who refinanced or bought a house was was told that they were a hero that mm-hmm. the the heavens have opened up and blessed them with this manna and it's incredible Right. So and true. now that they've gone up to 4%, they're like, dude, we've been spoiled. You're such a loser. You got a 4% <laughs> loan. You suck. Uh, you, you, you definitely shouldn't tell anybody about yeah, that. Yeah. It's <laughs> very true. That's embarrassing. So it, it's, it's funny, the psychology with this stuff, yeah. right? Um, you know, it's where you were at, you know, things are going to get more expensive. Yeah. Uh, I don't know why they put student loans in here. No one pays student loans anymore. <laughs> Well, hopefully like, they do. Like, hey, we're your student loans are going up. So, what is the what is the increase on a zero payment if you add half a percent to zero? What do you, is it still zero? It's kind of what it feels like at the moment. So, student loans, I think it's May that they have to start paying them off. But the word mm-hmm. on the street is they're still in California and and all over the place. They're still cycling around the idea that the the government could step in and and waive some student loans. Uh, okay, I've heard ten thousand. I've heard fifty thousand. I've or maybe refinance your student loans to a lower rate, maybe. Well, you could, but if the government wipes them all off the books, then there's nothing to refinance. Yeah, yeah, so hot point. diggity dog. But if right. you have, um, there's kind of two tiers of student loans. There's there's like the government ones and then the right. private ones. And the private. Mm-hmm. I, honestly, I don't know because I never had a student loan people because you know what I did? I joined the army. I served my country and I got my college for free. Well, not free. You paid for it. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> Oh, wow. I don't know if I should have done that. But the, <laughs> well, no, like seriously, like to me, like, like I look at, I, I look at the, you know, everyone should serve in the military kind of, you know, if, if you're not coming out of college, you're out of high school with a whole lot of direction, you know, this handful of student clientele that is highly motivated human beings. If you're just a normal little old kid who's doesn't know what to do and you're just yeah. going to go rack up student loans, hanging out at the colleges, trying to figure it out. The military is for you. Yeah. Gives, gives you, you that some direction, structure gives you some and purpose yeah, helps absolutely. you understand patriotism for your country. Right. Um, and, oh, by the way, you I get agree. a 10% discount at Lowe's for the rest of your life. That's fantastic. Dude. I just used it on Saturday. Getting some <laughs> propane. <laughs> Oh dear. Is propane offensive now? I don't know. No. Is that offensive too? Like how do we barbecue if we don't have propane? <laughs> like is there an electric barbecue? Is that a thing? <laughs> Actually, it must be because my aunt ha- I don't know what I'm talking about my aunt today so much. The my aunt has this um this like grill thing on her countertop in her kitchen that she cooks steaks on. But it's like some kind of like infrared electric grill. So I you know, I wonder if that's like a thing. Like for a barbecue. <laughs> Maybe electric. Well, they they have like those hot plates that are electric, but not is, like though, a grill with when flame. When like hits and there's no energy, how do you plug in your electric <laughs> barbecue? I don't think there's an electric barbecue. So then I need a barbecue with solar panels, so that way I can charge it in the daytime to run my electric grill mm. at night. Now you're onto something. I am onto something. Yeah. <laughs> I they probably already sell that at Harbor Freight. The um, <laughs> I'm going to go look after this. I'm becoming a bit of a doomsday prepper. You know, we're starting to get a little more food storage, a little more water. Hmm. That's good, ammo, though. But I would never admit that out loud. <laughs> the, uh, you know, you, got, you know, extra box of Band-Aids. Well, but just being prepared alone helps you just feel a little less anxious and worried. So I think that's kind of the goal is to, yes, we're seeing a lot of crazy things going on around us, but if we're just prepared for things changing, then we'll be a little more, you know, just calm, calm through it. You know, you know, so it's funny in this article, I I scrolled down to it while you were talking because I wasn't listening is, um, (laughs) is the savings section. And, and I, you know, it's just the savings is such an utter, dis- see, the, there's two psychologies to interest rates, right? So interest rates are, are, mm-hmm. are, are great when they're low for people who want to buy cars and houses. Mm-hmm. 
they're terrible for ri retirees who rely on very conservative. That's a good point. Yeah. Savings accounts. CDs, You're right. Things like that. And here the savings account says uh, currently uh, paying 0.06% on average at the old right. bank. I also but, love the top line where it's like deposit rates will be much slower to respond to the rate increases. So isn't it funny? <laughs> it's that's not funny fair. It works, right? They'll they drop that rate increase. real fast when interest the rates savings go down. Interest rate. But then it's a little sticky on the upside. Well, I know they're raising rates, but our 0 0.06, but we give them 0 0.065. That's a good percent. point. That's pretty yeah, funny. It's just, all that stuff is a little scammy, a little yeah. funny. Mm -hmm. Um you know, like, like, well, then why are mortgage rates going up so quickly? Oh, get them up. Get the rates up higher. Uh, you know, but when it comes to raising your savings rate, mm, we'll get around to it. Yeah, good point. So kind of funny. Well, Tana, I have a surprise article for you that I didn't tell you about. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because I Let's thought it was it. very relevant to you. So that's why I had it. Okay. Um, in January, oh. <laughs> 4.3 million people quit their jobs. So there's a rhetoric that came up last year called the Great Resignation. Are you worried I'm going to quit my job? <laughs> no, I'm just trying to. I'm trying to let you know that you have okay. options, and I think oh, that thanks. that's powerful. That way, you could negotiate your salary maybe better. Well, that is else. powerful. Yes. The, um. So this is interesting, right? So leverage. this happened last year that all of a sudden everybody started quitting their jobs, and so here you see in the bullet point or key bullet points. There are 11.3 million job opens. Wow. <laughs> ugh, ugh. That was, that's what it sounds like when you don't eat breakfast. <laughs> um, uh, just shy of the record that was hit in December, which was like 11.4 million or something like that. Mm -hmm. And so in January, 4.3 million people quit their jobs. And went elsewhere looking for new jobs. Higher paying jobs. Well, and that's that's what the, that's what's funny, right? Remember, a lot yeah. of what's going on lately when you watch the news is everything is bad, everything is wrong, everything is upsetting. Everyone right. should jump off a cliff. This is a great and time so, to go look for the job that you've always wanted. Yeah, we ironically have a job. really strong labor market. Yeah. So look at this: the blah 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 comes off of a year almost. So forty eight million people quit their jobs last year. Isn't that incredible? That is incredible. That should give you some confidence that you too can quit your job. <laughs> that way I can hire two people I don't want to less than what I pay you. Oh, thanks. Just, isn't, that, isn't that how it works? Isn't that what is no that, was that out? Did we just do a, an example of outsourcing? <laughs> is that is that what just happened? <laughs> oh dear. Yeah. I don't want to look out outside. No, thanks. <laughs> I'm I'm staying you right here. Leave because then you wouldn't be able to do this kind of fun stuff. Like, who doesn't want to be my punching bag? Right. Once a week on this show. That is so true. Thank you for hey, that acknowledging nice that. Feelings. I was, I was, I said that like is like one of those like reverse psychology things. Where you and I totally to say, agreed with you. No, 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 Mike. This uh, uh, pure joy is all I receive here. No, it's all in good fun. The um. So here, the the data suggests people aren't quitting their jobs to exit the labor market and sit on the sidelines. Instead. A high level of resignation indicates a strong labor market with ample opportunities. Yeah, that's great news. Once again, Tan and I are searchers of information, right? Mm -hmm. We're trying to find all the pieces of the puzzle that help us justify why we think the market can go up. And guess mm -hmm. what? If there is still a strong labor market, that is very important. If there is still a demand for jobs, that's going to have positive mm -hmm. increases in salary, people can renegotiate, people can get little raises. Right. Obviously, the issue we were talking about stagflation last week, you know, and so the issues come become well, if inflation is higher than than growth on different levels, you know. I mean, your individual job growth of income, if you're losing money mathematically. So this is this is a great sign. I I loved seeing and reading this article because it made me realize that if people are confident enough to quit their job and go take another job. They have a lot of confidence in the outlook of that employment, mm -hmm. which means that these companies, wherever they're going, are strong, viable companies mm -hmm. making money and paying people. Yeah, good point. Boom, drop the mic. It's it's attached to something. So I don't know if I can drop it. Here, hang on. <laughs> Look at that. Do you think that is great news? Are dumber after listening to this or smarter? <laughs> well, I just hope they enjoy it. Oh, so this is like a satire show, really. It's like it could be. This is Saturday Night Live. We need we're a little just, humor in our we're lives. Just spoofing everything. No. 
No, I don't even know where to go with that comment. This is, <laughs> I'm done with this. So, hey, I've got to go because I have a meeting in 10 Yes, minutes. you do. So, everybody, thank you for watching the show. Thank you for listening to the show. Please subscribe to us on YouTube, Rumble, or on your podcast stuff. We appreciate the emails and the feedback that we get. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's a little critical, but that's okay. I like it. Yeah, you know, absolutely. We're here to ruffle feathers, and and hopefully, you know, you're gaining a lot of information and thought. But mm -hmm. as Tana said in the beginning of the show, we do retirement planning. Our job is to take all of these things and help people make good, informed decisions, so that they can be immune from the drama of the world. We want people to have viable income plans so that they mm -hmm. don't. What's the number one risk? Run out of money, right? And you know can take care of themselves if they end up in a worse financial situation based on um, getting sick and all those terrible things or taxes go up, inflation goes up. We want to protect mm -hmm. you from all that crazy. So anyways, uh, there's a banner here. Hang on, wait for it, wait for it. I'm always bad at this. Give us a call. 805-500-7035. Visit our main website, the Lind group.com. Lind is L Y N D. And everybody, I got to go slow now because I always got to switch back to the exit video. Everybody have a nice day. <laughs>